This podcast is to introduce the sport of badminton as you would teach it in high school physical education programs. So it will deal with three key components. The first being the game rules and guidelines that you would teach to students. Second being basic shots and basic skills that you would teach as part of your instructional curriculum. And third being modified game forms which you would use to teach badminton to students during classes. So let's start first with an overview of the sport and general rules and guidelines. For game play, play begins with the serve on the right side of the court and both feet have to be behind the short service line which is shown on the court diagram here. Service is cross court always begins on the right side of the court with an even score left side of the court with an odd score and so whatever this serving team or serving individual score is that determines whether they serve on the right side or the left side if it's an even number it's on the right if it's an odd number it's on the left to be a legal serve the serve must pass the short line on the opposite side of the court and be to the the right or left of midline to be considered inbounds or a legal serve if you are playing singles the game for singles is a court that is narrow and long so the inside boundary lines determine the sideline <coughs> for singles but the baseline is the far back line if you're playing doubles it's it's slightly different doubles uses the short baseline here but uses the wide sidelines for doubles play as far as general overall scoring and common faults or violations of scoring as far as scoring guidelines you have to be able you have to serve to be able to score uh, games are traditionally played to 15 points for singles or for doubles and to be able to score you have to win the volley from a serve and and then the uh, to be able to score a point common faults are failure to return a legal serve hitting the shuttle outside boundary lines hitting the shuttle into the net uh, hitting it two or more times on a return, touching the net with your body or any part of the racket during play, letting the shuttle hit the floor inside the court, carrying or catching the shuttle with the racket, hindering or interfering with the return of another player, encroaching under the net, either the feet, the body, or the racket so the body cannot go under the net or reach over the net to hit a return so the racket cannot pass over the, over the net on a return, touching the shuttle with anything other than the racket, and then when hitting the initial serve both feet must be on the floor when serving and most feet both feet must be on the floor when you receive the initial serve after that jumping is allowed but on the initial serve and on the initial reception your feet have to be on the floor key skills that you would teach for the forehand you would first start out by teaching the grip the forehand grip key cues to teach students when you're teaching this particular grip is that forming a V on that top bevel the heel of the hand is at the butt of the racket. The index finger is slightly ex extended as if they were going to pull the trigger and they squeeze the, uh, the trigger on impact with the, the shuttle. For the backhand it's just slightly different. There's a clockwise rotation of one bevel so the V is on the first bevel instead of on the top bevel. Knuckles are on the top of, of the racket and it's used for backhand shots. The thumb grip is used mostly for drop shots, uh, either overhead or uh, for mostly overhead drop shots. Basically, you move the thumb to where it rests on top of the top bevel, so there's no V for this particular grip, and it's only used in those drop shots. And so you want to make sure and monitor students, make sure they don't utilize this all the time. They're only using it when they're switching to a drop shot. The basic shots that you should teach students are the forehand and backhand serves overhand forehand and backhand clears underhand forehand and backhand clears forehand and backhand drives and the forehand and backhand drop shots uh, teaching those five uh, groups of skills throughout the unit gives them the, most of the general skills to be able to play the game fairly well so first for the long serve the long serve is usually done when you're trying to serve deep into the court uh, notice the position of the player is also farther back from the short line in comparison to the backhand serve which is usually right on the short line with this particular serve 
use a handshake grip, up and back stance. The bird is birdie's held at waist level. You uh, weight starts on your rear foot and will progress to your front foot as you uh, swing forward. Cock the wrist back on the back swing. For contact, then you shift your weight from the back foot to the front foot. Uh, contact the shuttle about knee level, so the shuttle's dropped from waist and contacted about knee level. And you want to hit the birdie high and deep, following through with the racket up across the front of your body and rolling your hips and shoulders forward. The backhand serve is usually performed, as you can see from the diagrams, right at the short line. For that one, the the uses the the handshake grip, also the square stance versus as much as a, of an elongated uh, front to back stance. The birdies held at waist level, dropped and contacted just below waist level. So there's little no action of the wrist. It's usually a very short a serve. The idea is to get it just beyond the short line of the opposing side of the court. Contacts about the level of the thigh. You kind of push the shuttle across the net. You want to make sure it travels fairly low and close to the net. You basically raise the, the racket up to eye height pretty much on the follow through of the, the backhand stroke, rolling the hips and shoulders forward. As far as the overhead forehand clear, for this particular shot is when the birdie is above the head, it's used to hit the birdie deep into the court of an opposing player. So if the court player's at the net, you want to take them to the back of the court, you hit the overhead clear. For this one, it uses the, the standard, standard grip. You step in opposition with this, both arms are above the head. The weight starts on your rear foot, it shifts to the front foot as you hit this, the birdie. You lead the opposite elbow as as you step into the execution of the shot. Move the non-dominant arm down towards the body. Rotate the upper body. Make contact with arm extended above your head. Following through with the racket across the body to the opposite side. Notice also there's a step forward with this. And so you step forward changing from the back foot becomes the front foot or a weight transfer. The backhand overhand clear is very similar, however, it's hit from a backhand stroke. So for this particular stroke, you're going to want to use that rotation of, of the grip one bevel to have a backhand grip. This step goes towards the back of the cord instead of towards the net for this particular stroke. It's a same side step. So the if the right arm is the contact arm, the right foot steps forward, left arm is the contact arm, left foot steps forward. For this one, the the elbow extends, the racket, the birdie is contacted above the shoulder, uh, arms extended, reaching high above the head to, to hit the birdie, following through with the racket hit as you make contact. For underhand shots, the underhand clear uses the same trajectory pattern. The big difference here between the underhand clear and perhaps the the underhand drop shot is the arc. For this particular shot, you hit it high and deep into the back of the court. Once again, it's designed for if your opponent is at the net, you want to send him to the back of the court. So for this one, you use the handshake grip. Reach that dominant hand, dominant foot forward. So notice that the same side step here for this as well. Uh, you basically pivot and reach for the oncoming shuttle, contact using a wrist action so that you hit the birdie high and deep, contact as high as possible, pronating the forearm, bringing it up across the body as you push off with your, your feet, moving towards the uh, back towards midcourt. The underhand back end clear is very similar except the the step is using a backhand stroke instead of a forehand stroke. With this particular stroke you start stepping with uh, a same side grip or same side step. Reach forward with that dominant hand, hold the racket palm up, I mean excuse me, arm up and palm down. The weight slightly on the front foot, pivot and 
pivot towards the oncoming shuttle, move towards the net, and step on the non-dominant foot. And so notice this one when you make the contact with the shuttle, um, you're stepping into the, the birdie to make the, the contact. Basically, as you notice, it's the same side step again with this as in all backhands. The racket's underneath the shuttle. You basically lift the shuttle high into the air as you're trying to send it deep away from an opposing player. The key after all of these is to return to center court as, as soon as possible after you hit the each particular shot. The forehand drive is more is, is a stroke that's hit from the side of the body, so it uh, birdie is approximately waist height when contacted. It's a more forceful drive. It doesn't arc. It usually drives in a straight plane over the top of the net. For this one, you start with a handshake grip. You'll step same side foot towards the birdie, hold the racket in front of the chest, weight's distributed about between your feet, step with that dominant foot, pivot and turn in the direction of the shuttle, rolling the wrist over as you make contact. The power comes from that supination of your forearm and then continue swing across the body naturally towards the net. As you finish this one, a key cue to work on is make sure they palm down so they, sup they supinate the forearm and then turn palm down and then move, remove, return to center court to prepare for the next return. Backhand drive is very similar, stepping with uh, same side arm and foot, using that backhand grip with a rotation of one bevel, racket in front of the body, same thing, it's a sidewards pattern of the racket as far as its travel, so you contact, contact approximately waist height, driving the birdie in a straight pattern over the net, so there's not much of an arc to this one either. You want to contact the shuttle as high as you possibly can. Use supination of the forearm for power and roll the wrist over. So you want to finish palm up instead of palm down here. So a thing is supinate and palm up is a key cue for getting the students to understand that motion of driving the birdie. The overhand forehand drop shot. For these particular shots, technique is very similar to the, the overhead clear. But what happens is you drop the birdie just over the net. So it's basically just a touch of the racket where you easily uh, tap the racket, still following through across the body, but the goal is just to drop it just over the front of the net. The underhand drop shot is used more at net play if you're just trying to drop the birdie just over the top of the net. For this one, same side step, just an easy tap it's usually just a small flick of the wrist to send the birdie over the top of the net with this stroke. It can be hit in many different directions, straight, hairpin being diagonally down the net, different types of placement. You can do lots of variations in your instruction. The underhand drop shot or backhand drop shot is very similar to the to the backhand clear. The difference being you just easily tip the birdie over the top of the net key once again here you can hit across the net down the net with with this particular shot as well so when you're teaching badminton to students some key types of games that you can use are serve placement games in other words using hula hoops or marked areas on the floor giving various points for placing the the birdie in different areas where they would keep score on a scorecard as to how many points they score um, drive and clear placement games, similar, putting a target area in which you hit the birdie in uh, to try to score points that way. Short and long games, in other words, playing with only half the court and you have to be able to play uh, deep or play short. In other words, the whole game takes place inside the short line to work on drop shots and here pin shots. Rotational types of games where one partner hits the serve, the other partner does the return. You can use as many as three students on a court playing those type of games or perhaps switching side games or all different types of modifications that you can use for teaching badminton.